Hi everyone, here we are again. I'm Robin, the Sudoku guy, and this is the final segment in the series of videos that we're doing for you where we teach you how to do Sudoku puzzles. Now up to now they've been very easy puzzles, but by the end of this session you should be able to do medium hard puzzles. Well, what have we done so far? Well, we've, we've talked about TMB, top, middle, bottom, for blocks across here. We've talked about LCR, left, centre, right, for vertical blocks. We've talked about ramifications. We've talked about matching pairs. We've talked about uh, solving cells that are empty, if there's one cell or two cells or three cells. We've, most important of all, we showed you a technique called the cross-meet uh, technique. And today, I've got two more techniques that are really powerful that will really help you. But before we show you those, here's a, se a segment of where I show you how to solve three empty cells in a block. Enjoy. I'll be back in a minute. Howdy. Here we are, Robin, your Sudoku guy, with lesson number nine. This lesson, we're going in a new direction. Instead of working out how to solve one and two cells in a row, column, or block, we're going to start on solving three empty cells. And today we're going to look at three empty cells in a block. I've got a really simple uh, puzzle here uh, just to show you and demonstrate what I mean. If you look at this puzzle, this, this block here, there are three empty cells. If you look at, um, let me see, this puzzle here, there are three empty cells. Same here, same here, same here. So I've basically done it so you can see lots of examples. Now, when you first see a puzzle, some people will like to look at it and look for these sorts of things before they go through the regu regular procedure that I've taught you. That's up to you. So let's look just first of all and demonstrate how simple it is to solve three empty cells in a block. Okay, take this one. We look at these three empty cells and we count through to nine to find out which numbers are missing. First of all, we'll go with one. Well, two is missing. Two can't go there because of that two. Uh, two can't go here because of this two. Therefore, this becomes the two. Now, what you're left with is, believe it or not, a matching pair. One, two, we're missing a three, and a four, five, and a six. We're missing a three, six. Okay, there's no six, there's no three down here, so you're, you're set. Now, sometimes you can go right through and complete it. We'll see. Let's try this one. We're one. Well, we know we can't put a 2 in there. If we can't put a 2 in there, it has to go there. So we're left with a, a matching pair, and that matching pair would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now let's look down. There's an 8 here, which means that that has to become a 7, and this has to become an 8. And just because we did that, we can work out what that one is. And it is a one, two, three. Uh, oh no, we've, that has to be a matching pair for this one, doesn't it? There's only two cells left. Three sixes in one, it'll be three six in that one too. Okay, let's take this, this block now. There's three missing numbers. One, two, three, four. We're missing a five. Five can't be there because of that five. So a five will have to be down in here. But you can't be over here because of that five, that five, that five. That's, we did the, we did the, you know, the intersection across the vertical here. Therefore, this has to be the five. Five, 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 that works. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are missing. Seven and eight. 7 and 8. Let's see what does with that happens. Well, there's an 8 here, so that has to be a 7. And uh, we'll put that there. This one has got a 7, so that has to be an 8. It would have been an 8 in any case, based on the matching pair. 
That's easy, isn't it? Here's another puzzle with only three, three block with only three. Um, we're missing a one, uh, we're missing a two, two, we're missing a two, a two could go there and a two could go there, but there's a two here so we can't put it down there. We're missing a, a three, three can go there. No, it can't, three has to go down here. Uh, or here, well that, believe it or not, that's the, uh, that's the last one in that row, so that's definitely where a three will go, so you're left with a matching pair with a two and uh, something else. Let's see what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, it's a seven. Two, seven, two, seven, and guess what? There's a seven up there, so that becomes a two, and this becomes a seven. Look how fast it goes. Admittedly, this is a very simple puzzle, but I want to show you the technique. Well, now we come to something new, and this is so valuable. It's called the rule of exclusion. Another way of saying it, it's a rule whereby it gives you clues on what to get rid of, little numbers, and you can get big numbers. It's amazing. I use the rule of exclusion for all puzzles. So let me show you basically what it's all about. Then after that, we're going to see another technique called outside the puzzle. So don't go away. Here we are. This is the rule of exclusion. This is not a real puzzle. It's only a section of the puzzle. And what I've got here is something that is most interesting. If you look here, the, one, the ones, we have a one on the right, we have a one on the center. Up here, the one has to be either there or there. So let's put it in. We'll put a one there or there. Now I want to show you something. Over on this side, we have a matching pair, a one, two matching pair. And what I'm going to say now is really important. If that is the only place in this block that you've got two ones or ones, it means that this, anywhere along here, this row, can't have a one because we know with a matching pair that one of these ones, that was a pun, one of these ones is going to be the one. If that's the case, you can't have a one all the way along here. So what that means is that we can get rid of this one and, and this becomes the big one. Now, once you've done that, what's the ramification? If you know there's going to be a one on the bottom and there's a one in the center, up here, you're going to have a one, two, two possibilities of a one as well. But nothing for the rest of that row because one of those is going to be a one. Now, that's important to understand. Uh, and you come across this type of thing, oh, many, many times. I'm using the rule of exclusion for many, many puzzles, particularly when they get harder. Now, I'm going to be back in a second, so don't go away, to show you another example of the rule of exclusion. Well, here we are again with another example of the rule of exclusion working. It's so powerful. It's really good to understand this one. Let's look at this scenario. It's, not, it's part of a puzzle. Here we have a block, and we have a column that is part of that block. What I'd like you to look at closely, is there a number in this block that only appears in a row or a column. And if you look closely, it's the number five. Did you get that? Here's number five. I'm going to circle it in blue so you understand it. Here we go. Here's a five uh, there, and here's a five here. They are only found in this column, but it's all part of the block. In this block, you'll only find the fives over here, which is part of this column. If those are the only places in this block that have a five, one of these fives must be the real big five. And if that's the case, we can exclude, remove, eliminate, get rid of any other five that happens to be down here in that column. And let's, if I look at that, I see several fives. Let's look at, uh, just for fun, we'll go in order. We'll go to, to take this one first. If I get rid of this five here, 
we now finish up with the big three. Okay, so there's one step that helped us. You can probably start to see what else can happen now already. If I get rid of this five, this becomes a seven. Okay, let's see what happens now. Oh, that becomes, that was supposed to be a seven, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at it sideways. Now we have one cell left down in here with a five in it, and we can get rid of that five, like so, but we've already got a seven up here, which means you can get rid of that seven, and now we finish up with a big two. Now, isn't that fantastic? Just because we understood the power of the rule of exclusion where these were only on that side of that block, therefore you can get rid of all the other fives down here. And that also enables you to get new numbers. Wasn't that neat? Have fun looking for places where you can use the rule of exclusion. Don't go away. We've got more to come. Before I tell you about the next really neat technique, some questions have come in, so I thought I'd share some of them with you. Peter says, why play Sudoku? Well, first of all, it's really good for the brain because you've got to do a lot of thinking, and, uh, and that's even more important for uh, those who are getting older. The number of people in North America uh, are pretty large that are looking at my videos on YouTube, and they average from about 55 and above. But if you go to India, they're from 20, 25 years to 40 years. It's a bit different all over the world. It's amazing. And in some places, there's more men than women, and some places, there's more women than, than men look play puzzles. It's just fantastic. It's a great time filler. Uh, I learnt when I was a, a tour guide some years ago, traveling the world, and I spent a lot of time waiting around for planes in airports. So I took out a book, and, I, and actually, I prefer books. Uh, that's just me, because I can uh, change things easily. Why have small numbers? Why even bother to put little numbers in? Well, at the beginning stages, if you are a beginner, I recommend it. It really does help. As you get more and more experience, you can go ahead and not put the numbers in. But I, my, my experience is simply this. If you're going to get up to the advanced level where they're really tough, I find putting in little numbers a tremendous benefit. Matter of fact, on my tutorials, I have lots of tutorials showing people who are playing advanced puzzles how to get rid of little numbers like we did here. If it's a really tough puzzle, but you have to have the little numbers put in there and you have to know how to put them in, and I'll show you that in the next section. Okay. Um, oh, here's one from Dave. Can you have two answers in a puzzle? The answer is no. Sometimes you're tempted to... Uh, to, there's certain puzzles that are not designed very well. And you may think that there's two answers, but no, if there's only one answer for every Sudoku puzzle. So that's it for the time being. Don't go away. I'm coming back with the new technique called Outside the Puzzle.